everyone and welcome to the final session in our introduction to phobias, OCD and depression. In this session, we'll start to explore each condition a little further. So for a deeper understanding of the three conditions that you have to know for your exam, it is advised that you become familiar with some of the key terms and concepts that you'll be expected to use. And you're also advised to explore the conditions to widen your learning. So even though your specification does say that you only need the biological explanation of OCD, for example, there's nothing stopping you learning about other explanations, which you might even find come in handy for your evaluation. So let's start with phobias. Pause the video for two minutes while you try and list as many phobias as you can name and explain. Let's see what you got. Uh, there's many, many, many more out there, but give yourself a tick if you thought of these. Agrophobia, a common phobia, fear of open spaces. Arachnophobia, fear of spiders. Claustrophobia, a fear of enclosed spaces. And like I said before, there are many, many more. So for this next task, let's have a look at the phobias, they are listed one to seven, and see if you can match them with the correct phobia. Pause the video for five minutes. You could even do this with somebody at home or next to you if someone's available. And here's our answers. So acrophobia is the phobia of heights. Coolrophobia, the phobia of clowns. Hydrophobia, the phobia of water. Hemophobia, the phobia of blood. Zoophobia, phobia of animals. Nephophobia, the phobia of clouds, and cryophobia, the phobia of ice or cold. Now, you don't have to know any specific phobias for your exam, although knowing one or two will make it easier when you're looking for examples to describe why and how phobias actually develop. Let's turn our attention to depression. So which of the following symptoms, we've got a list, 1 to 12, which of these would you associate with depression? So pause the video for two minutes and write down or tick off any that you think are associated with depression. Let's see how you got on. So here are our answers. So we had quite a few symptoms on the screen, but not all of them are associated with depression. So crying, low mood, lack of interest or pleasure in activities and feelings of worthlessness are all definitely associated with clinical depression. So well done if you got those correct. What about OCD? What type of compulsive behaviours might people with OCD demonstrate? So when someone has OCD, what is the physical compulsive behaviours that they might present with? Pause the video for two minutes while you jot some examples down. OK, and here's some examples. If you didn't get any of these, then add them to your list. And if you did, very well done. And of course, these aren't exclusive to everybody. We know something like OCD and depression and phobias are all very individual conditions. But typical compulsive behaviours, checking, cleaning, repeating acts, order and symmetry, obsessive hoarding and counting. So well done if you've got any of those. So I mentioned before that key terminology is crucial. So for each of the terms on the screen, now is your time to find and write a suitable definition. So pause the video for 10 minutes while you locate a good, easy definition of each of these terms, something that you could use practically in your exam, and write your definition down. So here's some definitions for you. If you didn't manage to get all of them, then do jot them down. So an obsession, an unwanted or unpleasant thought that repeatedly enters your mind involuntarily. Compulsion, repetitive behaviour or mental act that is done to counter the emotions caused by the obsessive thought. And that's why OCD is comprised of the, uh, the obsession and C, the compulsion as well. Depression, as we said earlier, it's a mood disorder often characterised by low mood. Phobia, an example of an anxiety disorder characterised by extreme fear and anxiety. The DSM, 
Diagnostic Statistical Manual used to categorise and diagnose mental health conditions. So you won't really get an explicit question on the DSM, but it will be worth your while knowing that when we talk about symptoms of these conditions, the DSM is the, is the big medical book that the uh, medics will use to make the diagnosis. So a definite place in your division. Serotonin, a neurotransmitter that exerts a calming effect on the brain, inhibiting neurons from firing. And like we mentioned in another online session, the interactionist approach, an approach that uses several levels of explanation to explain a particular behaviour. So a good rival to any theory that you consider to be reductionist. 